Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at several interesting star pointer devices. This one is the observoscope. This I date uh, to about 1940 or so, something like that. This is from Edmund. It's called the Star Pointer and it's from uh, maybe the 50s or 60s. This one I can definitely date. This is the Skillcraft uh, Star Pointer and it dates 1968 or so. This one uh, is David Kennedall's Sky Pointer and it dates from the 1990s. All these devices have one purpose in mind, uh, to point you at something in the sky. All of them are based on the armillary sphere. The armillary sphere was invented over 2000 years ago. I believe the Chinese were the first to invent one. And it's basically, this is basically an armillary sphere, although this is a somewhat simplified version. You all know what a planisphere is, probably. It's just a, a simple device to help you figure out what's in the sky at a given time. You set the time of day versus the date, and you get a pretty good rough idea of what the sky looks like. Now, it's, of course, very distorted because it's so small, but it does at least give you an approximate idea of what's in the sky at a particular time and approximately where it might be. Also, I'm sure most of you are aware of how setting circles work on a telescope. So here we have um, a telescope with setting circles, and up here we have declination, down here we have right ascension. By far the easiest way that I've found to use uh, setting circles is to uh, find a star, um, look it up, uh, look up its right ascension and declination, say, uh, let's say Betelgeuse, say, suppose we know what that is. And then we can find the star after we polar align the scope. We find the star with the scope. The declination should be dead on or real close to it. If it's not, you've got a problem with your polar alignment. Uh, right ascension will be completely off. But all you have to do is just set this dial. And they're designed to do this. You set it to whatever the... I don't know what the right ascension of Betelgeuse might be. But let's suppose it's uh, 16 hours. So let's set it to 16 hours and with more precision if you want to. Then, from then on, at least, as long as you're in, on top of using the telescope and tracking with it, you move the scope around and you're going to be able to find whatever you want using right ascension and declination. If you walk away from the scope, of course, if it doesn't have a clock drive, you're going to have to reset. Um, it should be fairly straightforward. Just point it at Betelgeuse again or, or something with a known right ascension and just uh, calibrate your setting circle again at that point. That is far easier than trying to use equations of time and all sorts of fancy stuff to do that. That's the easiest way to do that. So what's with these devices? This star pointer here, if, first of all, if you look at it, you're going to it's kind of like a telescope. As a matter of fact, it's pretending to be a telescope. It's a little tiny telescope here. So you set this uh, to your latitude, 40 degrees. Point this north. You're polar aligned now. Uh, please don't get carried away because it's not going to be very good, precise polar alignment. Uh, now you use their little telescope here and you can, you can play the same game. The problem with this is that this is sort of designed like a planisphere to involve time in the whole deal. So you have this equation, you've got these uh, settings for time and date down here, very much like a planisphere. I have to loosen it up a little bit. So you can move things around and then, oh man, this is frustrating. So then you have to uh, play with the right ascension and do this and that. And it's, um, it's basically the same idea as operating telescope. The problem with this device is that this doesn't have a good direct reading for right ascension. So it's, it's going to be challenging to use this one. This is a bit of a tricky. I would say this is a desk ornament. This one here um, doesn't even pretend to involve time. And it's a, a kind of a simple device. Here is uh, the way of setting latitudes. So you set your latitude here. There you go. And then you can polar align it. Aim that thing north. 
Then you've got, of course, declination here. Good old useful declination, no problem. Here's your little mini telescope. Right ascension is over here, but instead of having a setting circle, you've got to move this little pointer around. So suppose we're talking about Betelgeuse again. Point this at Betelgeuse, set this to 16, lock it down, and then everything else you can offset. No sweat, very easy. So this one is fairly usable in the sense that setting circles are usable. Fairly straightforward too. It doesn't involve any equations of time or anything like that. This one, on the other hand, this is the David Kennedall's Sky Pointer. This has all the bells and whistles. This has got everything. It's got a full-on um, time computer with right ascension, declination, the whole business. Everything is down here, very much like a planisphere. So you set the time uh, versus the date. You can even offset the thing for daylight savings time or um, time zone or whatever. So you can offset that if you need to. Your right ascension is readable down here. Unlike this one, you, it's hard to read the right ascension on this one. This one, you can read the right ascension right off here. Uh, so you can point this at something and dial in. Suppose you wanted to set this. You could set this by uh, setting the, aiming this at, say, Betelgeuse. So you aim it at Betelgeuse. You know the right ascension of Betelgeuse. So you can set it at uh, 16. Point it back there. <laughs> you got to tweak it back and forth a few times. So you know the right ascension of Betelgeuse. So you point it back and forth. You can do that. And then you can read the date and time here <laughs> if you want to. So you can use it sort of backwards. Or you can use the time and date and then figure out and, and get the right ascension. So you can use this in a number of different ways. Uh, and of course, declination is always very straightforward. This one is more complicated. This one is kind of hairy. This one is a model of the good old original armillary kind of a sphere. You aim this thing north and you've got to offset for your, here's your latitude. So you're pointing this at the North Star. You're going to pull or align this by setting this. You're going to set your latitude over here, which in my case is going to be 40 or so. So you set that 40, aim that north. The compass, you can't trust the compass, but they give you, in with the instruction sheet, they give you a set of magnetic declination offsets, so you can use the compass to do that for offsets. Uh, then this device here, see this is a little pointer. See, this thing has got a little, here's a peep, peep site here, and there's your, you're looking up this way, so you, you're going to look this way or that way. Well, the trick with this is, this doesn't have any way of changing the style. This dial is what it is. Suppose we're looking for uh, Beetlejuice. I don't know what it's, let's suppose it's, its declination is like minus 10 or something. I think that's about right, actually. So let's set this at minus 10. You set your, your pointer here to minus 10. That's your declination. You have to set that first with this device because there's no other way to read it. It's just a pain. Then, if you, can, if you point at Betelgeuse, if you know where Betelgeuse is and you point at it, you can read up here and get um, the hour angle, <laughs> which is the offset from the local meridian that Betelgeuse is right now. In this case, it's going to be, looks like uh, if it was here, it would be about two and a half hours or so. So right, in, uh, right now, Betelgeuse, if, if it was here, would be offset by two and a half hours. Everything else would be offset by two and a half hours. So if you wanted to find something, um, you would point up here, figure out the declination, and then offset by the appropriate amount 
If it's not, it's not going to be two and a half hours, maybe it's going to be three hours. Maybe it's going to be over on this side, two and a half hours, three hours, whatever. So you gotta, you've got to make this calculation. And the best way to make this calculation is with parchment and a quill pen in ink. That's the only way to do it because it's just antiquarian enough to fit this device. Um, let's, <laughs> let's go back to this device and uh, let's say point it over here somewhere. So we've got it pointed at something. We know what it is. Let's say it's Betelgeuse. We want to know the altitude of Betelgeuse. Well, this device here will allow me, if I put this on here carefully, balance it just right, that will allow me to read, I don't know if you can read it on the, on the video, but you can read the altitude and down here on this scale, you can read the azimuth in degrees for Betelgeuse. So you get the altitude and azimuth for Betelgeuse in that fashion. Very interesting, very complicated. All of this is completely unnecessary. I think this thing is as cool as it can be. It looks so cool on the desk. If only it was made of metal, it would be very nice. But this is a kind of a cheap plastic here. So the first time you knock this down, it's broken. It's, it's dead. Um, and you'll probably never be able to put it back together, right? So that may be why these are so rare. This is, uh, I've, I've only seen one and it's the one I bought. So that's the only one I've ever seen of one of these. Very interesting and rare kind of a device. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at all these interesting star pointers. Thank you for watching.